now. The lion ends up eating the man, destroying him. Verse 26, drop down there. When the prophet that had brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient to the word of the Lord. Lied to him, played him, got him caught in his emotions, and took him from the word of the Lord. Let nothing take you from the word of the Lord. Every message I preach, they go forth, and they're not getting deleted for nobody. Ever. Amen. Keep your guard up, child of God. I had a woman one time, I remember asking me, uh, she found my ministry and we was having a conversation, whatever. Let me help you prepare your sermons. <laughs> I said, nah, I'll pass on that one. Yeah, but if they can't help you get in there and try to prepare your sermons, they're going to try to work other ways to get you to change and take something away. Get you to sin against the Lord who gave you the word. Set you up and then down the road, then use it against you. Stay with it. Therefore the Lord had delivered him into the line which had torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord which he had spoken unto him. And he spake to his son, saying, Saddle me the ass. And they saddled him. And he went and found his carcass cast in the way and the ass and the line standing by the carcass. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of stop there on that story. Let's go to Revelations 13 and verse 16. Now we're, we're talking about the mark of the beast, religious persecution. See how deceiving this is? A man shows up, says he's a prophet, brings the word, lies to the, to the man of God who was a real true prophet, gets him off the word, gets him to follow a deception, religion, through, 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 through a man who says he's a prophet, he's a preacher, he's a teacher, he's a, he's a pope, whatever you want to call it, and deceives the child of God away from the truth. And then he gets judged. He loses his life because of it. Revelations 13, 16. Okay. We're going to read a series of verses that just talk about the word, the mark of the beast. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand. See what happened to the what happened to the man of God? Think about this: a mark in their right hand. So the man of God is sitting by an oak tree. That's it. Remember, his, that was his mistake. He should have just kept on pressing toward the mark, right? So he deceives him to, to give up his mind and his, his, and his authority to follow the direction that the, that the false prophet brought to him, the false message. It took him away from the word. And then he takes his hand and begins to eat its false teaching. See the, see the connection? He says, oh, okay. I'll believe it. I'll take it. And he then why was he doing? He ends up finding himself taking that very mark of the false prophet. That's the mark of the beast. And what did it bring on the man of God? Death. Judgment. Mark in the right hand. See, the devil's just having a good time right now. All these narratives on, you know, Amazon, you gotta use a chip in your hand you to, to get your and folks, that that very that's so that's fine. That very well is a natural narrative of what probably is coming, folks. But it's not your mark of the beast, quote unquote. That, that very well is a bar, what, what they're going to be enforcing as the future comes? Sure. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, a part of how, but your connection will be, to, it's spiritual, folks. It always has been. It's the heart, it's the giving of mind and your authority to the false prophets and narrative. Oh, okay, but God already told me, okay, I'm going to start eating it, partaking of it. Death. And that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Now that word name there, the original Greek is the same when it talks about the name of Jesus. Over and over, that name of Jesus, that name, many, many times throughout Matthew, I was looking at the Gospels. 
its religion. See how close it is. But you're taking the name of the beast. You're taking the Catholicism, the, the image, the name. You're taking that name of its false teaching, of its false narratives, of its false doctrines. And those churches that you support and that you go to, woman of God, brother of God, are you digging in the Word to, to prove all things and make sure what church you're going to isn't misleading you? Check it with the Word. And if it's not, then you flee it. Revelation 14, 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image. The beast in his image. And receive his mark in his forehead, your mind. Or in his hand by going forth and doing. Verse 11 And the smoke of, the, of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor, nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whoso receiveth the mark of his name. That word name means in the original Greek also means authority. You're giving of your authority taking on that name, its image, which is the, the church is, folks. I've been told one time, a guy commented on here, I was crazy. Crazy to, to think that because people are looking for something figurative. They want something that they can say, uh-oh, I got my cap here. They're not putting this thing in my forehead. Uh-oh, I'm not taking it. <laughs> that stuck to my head. <laughs> Or, or to my right hand, uh-uh, not happening. That you think it's something literally, figuratively, that you're going to refuse. It's spiritual. The, the man of God here took, fed, got fed false teaching, took it, believed it, took, then he took that mark, and he took himself from the presence of the Lord like, like, like Cain did. There's only two forces working. Satan wants to be worshipped by God. Washing of the water by the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, and they have no rest day nor, day, or, day nor night who worship the beast in his image and who receiveth the mark of his name. Revelations 15, 2. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire in them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image. His image. The Lamb, Revelation 13, the Christian churches. Why do you think I'm in anointed by God to cry out against all of these churches and all these false teachers? Because it's the mark of the beast. It's telling you it's okay to be baptized in titles of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's telling you, you women, you don't have to live a holy life. It's telling you, men, it's okay to live this way. It's, it's, it's always telling you something that's against the revealed Word. That's against the Word of God. And that's what happened to that prophet. He was given the, the Word and he went against it by another prophet who was false. Your mark of the beast. There's where it's at. People already, take, people already got the mark of the beast. It's already happening. You're holding on to a system, a church, who's, who's giving you false teaching. And you're taking it in. And you're, and you're accepting it here and you're defending it. And you're fighting for it. And you're defending that, that false teacher, that false narrative. This battery's got five minutes. I'll just switch it out here in a minute. I'll tell you what. Where am I at here? Let me go ahead and pop, pop another battery in. And then we'll keep going. And my butt needs a break. I'm telling me, folks, I'm sitting on like this wooden chair here, folks. An hour and 49 minutes. Hold on, let me, let me stop this. And uh, praise the Lord Jesus. Here, hold on, wrong button. It's over here.